edition of Buncom Live. I'm here with Clint Shepard. And Clint, I didn't even ask you your title. What is your title? I'm involved with energy management mm -hmm. uh, in the physical facilities department. For Buncombe County for Government. For Buncombe County Government, yes, okay. ma'am. Well, we are going to talk about what is behind us here. But first, let me tell you where we are. We are on the roof of 40 Cox, which is the new Health and Human Services Building. And if you watched our show last month, you know that that is now the integrated Health Department and Department of Social Services together in one location. We've come up on the roof and we are on the top of that building where the county has done something kind of interesting. And we'll probably do this again somewhere else, but this is our first uh, jump into solar panels. That's correct. Okay. And that's what's back here, solar panels. Mm -hmm. And I was just asking Clint, you know, why we want to do this and everything. So that's what we're going to talk about today. These are solar panels. They've got a cover on them here. That's correct. Because it's not complete, mm -hmm. not exactly complete. Mm -hmm. But I want Clint to tell you, because he's going to tell me, I can't wait to hear this, what's in here. Like this is glass, but if, and you may have solar panels on your roof, but I sure don't, never seen one this close. What's in here and how does that work? Uh, Kathy, what's in here is uh, rows and rows of copper tubing. Mm -hmm. In these copper tubing is the water. The water is heated from the sun. These panels are facing in a southward direction to get the most exposure of the sun. Once that water is heated, it travels inside the building, mm -hmm. is stored in uh, several storage water mm -hmm. tanks, mm -hmm. typical of the ones even in a residential home, right. to give you an idea. And at that point, this water is used for various purposes, such as uh, domestic hot water mm -hmm. in your, your sinks and your break rooms and your restrooms, mm -hmm. but also as well as uh, hot water in the HVAC system that ultimately produces uh, warm air to okay. keep people warm in the winter. Okay, that does, you just said a whole big mouthful. So you say that we pump water into these things and it sits here in the copper tubing mm -hmm. and the sun hits it and that water gets hot and then we like suck the water back out that's and correct. it goes back into yeah, I saw hot water heaters in there mm -hmm. big look like big hot water tanks that's correct. that are in there so it's going to go in there mm -hmm. and then this building will use that for their hot water mm -hmm. which has been heated by the sun that's correct instead of electricity mm -hmm. but then also for it tell me more about the hvac system yeah uh it's heating and air conditioning. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> okay. to, to keep it simple, there's the same kind of copper tubes inside the ductwork. And as the cold air blows across these copper tubes that has the same hot water from these panels, yeah. produced from these panels, yeah. it blows across those hot copper tubes, heats the air, and blows out and keeps them fully warm. So, so it's going to be used to heat the building, not only just the water in the building, but the actual heat from the building. That's correct. Well now, does that increase our water bill? <laughs> I mean, do you use a no, whole lot more water to uh, do no, you, you, it? No, uh, <laughs> I was trying to keep it simple, but ultimately yeah. this is a closed loop system. This yeah. water continually it's circulates. Water. It's the same water. So no more water is used whatsoever. And this same hot water travels inside the building yeah. and heats the domestic water that we purchase. Right. So no, we use no more water on this system. That's pretty amazing. Yes. So, so it's the same water we would use. So if you go turn on the hot water, that's the hot water that's filled up those tanks. Mm -hmm. So when the tanks deplete, it just puts more water in, mm -hmm. but it was the same water that we would be using anyway. That's right. I'm sorry, but that just amazes me. That is pretty interesting. So I don't know how many is here. I didn't count them before we there came. There is 16. So 16 of these. Four by eight panels. Four by eight panels. will do this one building. That's great. Okay. Uh, do you think it will it will meet the needs of this one? Uh, no, this this is only a supplemental system okay. to to ultimately reduce our costs that we pay in energy from electricity mm -hmm. uh, to to natural gas that we use originally to heat the water here. But it won't meet the entire need. No, ma'am. Okay, so you probably have to have three or four times this to meet the whole need. You think? Uh, you'd be getting closer. Okay. <laughs> And this is probably all we want up here. I have to say they don't look that bad and you're not going to see them. I don't think you can see them from anywhere unless you have one of these apartments around here and that then you can the see, the, way. see the roof. Um, so why? So you just told me why the county did that to reduce our cost. Do y'all have an estimate of how much you think this will save us? Uh, we have some projected estimates and we're hoping that this, this system is going to save us between $2,000 to $3,000 annually wow. between electricity mm -hmm. and natural gas consumption. 
Now, did we get a grant to do this, or is this just something the county did on their own? There, there has been supplemental funding involved with this project. So we have gotten funds to purchase the initial cost. Yes, that's Do you that's know how correct. long it'll take us to recoup from the savings? Uh, no, I do not at this point. Okay, but there will be a time when it's paid for itself. That's correct. Once this system gets up and running and we, we can actually compare mm -hmm. uh, energy bills from prior years to yeah. years that this uh, this system is functioning, we'll mm -hmm. be able to better, better calculate uh, how much precisely this is going to save us annually and what the payback will be on this system. So this, we see, is going to save us uh, energy and the environment. That's so it, it is a Buncombe Green thing. What other things are we doing? And I know there's several exciting things. One, we're going to save to the end because that's where we're going next. But tell me about some other things the county's doing that are green. Uh, primarily right now, the largest uh, program that we have going within the buildings of Buncombe County, mm -hmm. uh, we are, we are retrofitting our light fixtures. Taking now what does that mean? Retrofitting. That's a big old word. That, that means mean? taking the ugly old light fixtures out and <laughs> yeah. putting new pretty ones in that save us money. That save us money. That's now, correct. We would stick with the old ugly ones if they were saving us money, but they're not. So we're kicking them to the curb yeah, that's and getting right. some that are that are going to run more efficiently. That's correct. Okay, so we're doing that. I know we've done that in a lot of buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, what else are we doing? Right now we are in the process of converting 10 Sheriff Patrol cars uh, to, to propane powered, complete propane powered. That that just sounds. When we learn more about that, we'll come to you and tell you because that, that just freaks me out. A propane powered car. I mean, I think you actually go up and put the propane in the car like the gas. I don't. That just seems so weird to me. But even weirder to me is where we're going next because the county is actually installing electric car chargers. Am I right? That's correct. And these are going to be where? Where are we headed? We are headed to the parking deck at Buncombe County located on College Street. And so if you happen to be an electric car driver, we're going to have a parking space just for you and we're going to go check it out next. Thank you, Clint. Thank you. Thanks. This has been interesting, but hang in there. It'll get even better next. Mom, can I have a dollar? I think my purse is upstairs on the bed. everywhere are finding ways to keep kids active and healthy. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. Oh. Movement. Along with weight loss, it's one of the many ways to fight osteoarthritis pain. For more information on managing pain, go to fightarthritispain.org. Okay, here we are. We made it. We're uh, at the College Street parking deck. Uh, you come right off College Street uh, for the public entrance is there off College Street and Clint, here it is. There it is, our electric vehicle parking only spots. We have two of them for electric cars. Here's the deal where it plugs in. Now you got to tell me about this. Why in the county parking deck do we have two spots for electric cars? Well, uh, Progress Energy has an ongoing program throughout the southeast mm -hmm. and they're placing uh, several charging stations. Right in uh, various locations and they have worked an agreement out with Buncombe County in which Buncombe County asset acts as the host okay. to these charging stations and Progress Energy pays to put these stations here. Aha, so there's, that's important. Progress Energy paid to put the two charging stations here in our parking deck. It didn't cost the county or the taxpayers anything. No ma'am, uh, Progress Energy paid for the labor mm -hmm materials and various supplies to have these charging stations installed. Buncombe County's incurred no extra costs okay. for this project. So if we've got folks who have electric cars and they come here, they would pay a dollar an hour to park here. That's correct. But they could pull into one of these two slots, hook up their car with the electric thing, and then how much does it cost them to charge their car here? Uh, to, to use these charging stations in particular, uh, it costs them nothing to charge their cars here. However, they do have to pay to right. come into the parking deck right. to, get, to get access to these stations. So it would cost them a dollar an hour to park here. That's correct. Up to eight dollars a That's day. correct. But if they come here to charge their vehicle, it doesn't cost them anything. No ma'am. And the reason for that is because Progress Energy is doing this as a test. Yes. Right? Yes. So they're trying, I guess Progress Energy is trying to figure out how much electricity it's actually going to cost off the grid yes, to get a 
to get charge it, cars charged. Yes, ma'am. So that's kind of a win-win. I mean, we get to host these mm -hmm. and we get to help Progress Energy mm -hmm. and it really didn't cost us anything. Mm -hmm. You don't see that very often, do you? No. <laughs> I know you don't. And you don't get a free, a, a free place to charge your car. I don't know of anywhere, maybe, but here. And it's because it is an experiment and we're helping out Progress Energy. Absolutely. Is there anything else about these we need to know? No, I don't believe so. Okay, easy to use. We, uh, you know, just take it off and hook it up to your car. Now, stay tuned because what's next is where this goes on an actual electric vehicle. We're going to have one come and try it out, so stay tuned. Okay, now we're here. I'm here with Tom McCarthy from Asheville Chevrolet, correct? That's correct. Okay, and he is the Volt Certification Specialist. I think that's a cool title. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what we want to ask you about today is the Volt. We've already been in here and seen this thing with Clint, and he's explained all about you know, why it's here, but what it does, and that's what we get to see in just a few minutes, is if you actually plug this into something, it actually does something. So that's why we're here talking to Tom. And before we go and get the car, the actual thing, mm -hmm. uh, I want to ask you about, just a little bit about it because like you and I were just saying, hardly anybody has one. Right. Um, Asheville Chevrolet has them for sale. If you want to go check it out, if you want to know more after today, you can run over there and see one. Um, and we'll show you what it looks like inside too. Um, but I just wanted to ask you just a few questions before we actually pull the car in and check it out. Okay. Uh, how much do they cost? They range anywhere from forty to forty-five thousand, depending on exactly how you choose to equip them. Wow, that's yeah. not a cheap car. No, it is not. No, not a cheap car. But no gas, right? Well, it does have a gas engine. Okay. Um, but the gas engine's sole purpose is to charge the batteries. Seriously? It does not. No, it does not drive the wheels. The wheels are driven by electric motors. Uh, it is a fully electric car. It's just the engine works like a big alternator. So you have to put gas in it once in a while? Every once in a while. That gives you the ability to drive at extended distances. Uh, you don't have to worry about at, at the end of your charge life and you're stuck in traffic, how am I going to get home? I better pull off and find a place to plug in. Okay. Now that's the number one question because uh, we were, where we've heard about 25, 35 miles to a charge. That's correct. Yeah, well, depending on, on how average, it's driven. On mm -hmm. how it's driven. Uh, and you're exactly right. What if I'm sitting in traffic and and I run out of charge? So it's got a backup. It does. Well, that's kind of cool. Yes. So, uh, and then how much does it cost if I, you know, hook it in, when we hook it in and charge it up, how much does it cost to charge an electric car? It costs anywhere from a dollar fifty is the average based on current utility rates. Mm -hmm. uh, that will give it a full charge. For a dollar and fifty cents? That's correct. A full charge. So let's say you get 35 miles mm -hmm. out of that for a dollar and 50 cents. That's not bad. It's like getting a gallon of gas every 95 miles. Wow. It's equivalent. That's a pretty good deal. Yeah, it is. But now today, how many of these, and, and you may not know, how many charging stations are across the country? I mean, I don't, we just got this one. I know there's some, there's quite a few across Asheville. Mm -hmm. But then as you get out away from here, are there, can you charge your car? Yeah, you can. Uh, Biltmore Park currently has a couple of charging stations right. in, their, in their shopping center area. Mm -hmm. um, it's slowly being developed. It's going to take time. Yeah. Uh, but the infrastructure is being built now. And mm -hmm. I would anticipate within the next five years that it's not going to be very difficult to find a place to, to charge your battery. To hook up. That's right. That's really interesting. Now, what are some other little functions about the car? I want you to show it to us. Sure. Yeah. Um, and if you if you hear some noise, remember we are here in a parking deck, so you're going to hear cars starting and all that stuff. Um, but what are some other little neat features of the car? Well, the car can be equipped with all the options that you would get in your standard fossil fuel burning car. Yeah. Uh, you can get heated seats, leather seats, navigation. Uh, of course, it has air conditioning, full mm -hmm. climate control, uh, radios uh, with high-powered speakers. Yeah. and. So it's not like a golf cart. No, it is not. <laughs> no, it's, it's very luxurious, actually. Yeah, cool. Well, you know, I think we need to see one. Okay. Let's go get it. Okay. Okay. We'll do that. Okay. 
Okay, now, if we've, I've pulled it, I've got my electric car, and I've pulled into my charging station, and you showed us how you just hook your little, it's, it's almost looks like a gas hose, except mm -hmm. it's just a charger. That's right. Into the car. So let's say that I've pulled in here, I've been out and about, came in park, I go about my business, mm -hmm. you know, you pay for it, wave your card or swap your card or however, you plug in and then you go about your business. Mm -hmm. And then you come back and your car's charged. That's the idea. That's pretty much the idea? Yes. That's very simple. Yes. Um, I wonder if they thought about security. I mean, I guess somebody could come and unplug you. I mean, I guess You they can would. set the security system on the Volt uh, to set off the car alarm uh -huh. if it's unplugged Ooh. without you hitting your key fob first. Uh -huh. uh, so it'll, it'll set off an alarm to let you know someone's tampering with it. There you go. Well, so. That's good. And we were just saying, as you guys know, gas is, is just, it just keeps going up and up and up. It is. And as they perfect this, I think we're all going to have to. We're all going to have to eventually be doing something. Yes, um, it it is a lifestyle change, is yes. what we're looking at, and uh, people are going to have to start thinking about their plans and yeah. their driving habits before they go leave the house, yeah. uh, because it's going to be the way to go, and it, it certainly, is. especially with solar, will be using renewable resources. Right. Um, which is very important. Mm -hmm. We're going to run out of oil someday. That's right. And that's a good point. As Clint told us earlier, this is coming right off the grid and part of what Progress Energy is, is learning. Uh, but there are solar charging stations, of, mm -hmm. of which we'll show you one, a that actually uses the sun right. to charge. And then it's really not using, you know, it's not coming off the grid at that's all. That's right. And you said a lifestyle change. That's such a good point because this is totally alien to most of us to do this. And I think most people think they would be getting in a go-kart. You need to come with us next to see it's not. You're really not giving up any, anything except the way, the fuel that you use. That's correct, yes. Okay. So let's check it out. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, as you can see, you really don't give up anything including the new car smell <laughs> oh it's wonderful <laughs> it's been a long time since i've had a new car smell but you really don't give up any of the luxuries it, it's just electric because it's got i mean it's really got more than it than some cars uh it, it was so funny i said well it's an automatic it's not a straight drive and you said it doesn't have a transmission as we know it. <laughs> so it doesn't have a transmission, so it can't be a straight drive car. It, what's under the hood out here is probably the most unique thing uh, because this looks totally normal. I mean, you know, you've got all your little, you know, cool, there's a oop, charger, bolt mm -hmm. charger. Um, you've got this fancy thing here. It's got the uh, radio, right? Uh, heat and air conditioning, uh, just like a normal car. Uh, it's got an indicator over there that says charge cord connected. So we are still connected to the station out here. That's correct. That's great. Now, what else does it have? Tell me about some of this other stuff. Well, it, it comes with all the full features that you would find in an, any nice car. Yeah. Uh, we have cruise control. Wow. We have radio controls. Bluetooth technology is built in. Um, we have a full function navigation screen that you wow. can enter directions of where you want to go, and it will guide you by voice or oh. by map. Uh, to get there. Uh, it has full function radio, including satellite radio, mm -hmm. um, heated seats. Oh, I feel it. My yeah. heated seats. That is nice, too. <laughs> um, CD player. Wow. The DVD? Mm-hmm. A DVD player? Yeah, you can play DVDs on the screen here. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Wow. Well, I really don't, I mean, I don't miss anything. It's got a good feel. The seats feel nice. I mean, that part of it is it's even got a phone. Oh, it, it's got OnStar. It has OnStar uh, for safety. The car is built for safety. It has all the structural integrity mm -hmm. of all the cars that are being built nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, it has all the airbags, uh, stability track and traction control. Um, but in the event that you have something unfortunate happen, you have OnStar at a touch right. to uh, get you help. Right. You can even program these to open your garage door. Oh my goodness. So, so it really has all the bells and whistles. Yes, it it's does. It's just what's under the hood that's different. And and we need to go look at what's under the hood for sure. Right. Uh, before we do that, I do want to ask you, so um, 
it, it said, and I, I was reading your, your paperwork on the window here, mm -hmm. is this is a brand new car. Right. Uh, 7,600 uh, mile savings in gas in five years. That's correct. If it's used in the electric mode right. um, and, and you plan your day out uh, and you only charge the batteries once a day right. uh, and drive it 35 miles or less a day, right. it should save you that much money because while your electric bill at the house will be slightly higher from using the electricity, right. you will burn very little gas in this car. Uh, wow. The engine will burn, occasionally come on for maintenance purposes and run just to lubricate everything, but it doesn't stay on very long. Right, and it's not an engine like a transmission. It's, just it, it's not a powertrain as we know it. The engines, like I said, serves more of a purpose to charge the electrical system. Right. And there's another thing there that we wanted to catch that you said, uh, that you can charge it at home. That's correct. And it comes with a, uh, a cord that you can actually plug it into a regular outlet? That's correct. You can, if, if you have outlets in your garage, uh, either 110 or 220, um, it comes with a, a charging mm -hmm. cord and converter that you plug in and then you can just let it sit overnight and charge. Um, and one of the neat things about it right now, the electric companies are offering all sorts of incentives uh, to expedite the installation of these uh, outlets in your home. So in many cases, you can get it done for free or at very little cost. Right, because they're even wanting the information. That's they correct. They want to know what is this going to how much is this going to pull off our grid? How can we manage this? So they're in the, the learning mode, too. That's correct, yes. It's it's a lifestyle change for everybody. It really is. Well, let's go out and look at that engine. OK, okay. very good. Mm -hmm. OK, here it is. Uh, it doesn't. It really doesn't look like a normal engine. Tell me what I'm looking at. Well, you're looking at an engine, just like you would normally find under the hood, yeah. but the engine's purpose is to charge the batteries. Right, so it it's is, a little bitty. It's a smaller engine than what you would normally see in a car of this size. Right. Um, some differences are you're going to find electric cables right. uh, hooked to the engine, which mm -hmm. you're not used to seeing. Yeah. You're going to find some different things, like you're going to find two coolant reservoirs. Yeah. One of them is to cool the engine, just like you would normally see in a gasoline-powered engine. Right. But the other coolant reservoir supplies coolant to the batteries to maintain a steady, constant temperature so that the batteries will work more efficiently. Right. Uh, you're going to find some computerized controls to help monitor how the electricity is being handled so through the car. So that's a computer over here. Yeah, it's it's part computer and part uh, uh, generator uh, to right. combination to supply power. Right. So that's not the battery. That is not the battery. No, <laughs> okay. that is not the battery. Okay. However, the car does have a battery, uh, and the battery's purpose is to start the engine. Right. And it receives a charge and everything to keep it going because right. the engine does occasionally have to run. Right. So uh, that battery is separate from the batteries that power the wheels. Okay, so, so the batteries that really power the car are not in here. That's correct. They're somewhere else. That's correct. Okay, you show me where those are. I will be happy to. Okay. <coughs> If you'll notice, the rear seats are bucket seats, yeah. and it's not a bench seat like you typically see. This center section here, this cover that has the cup holders in it, yeah. directly underneath, all the way up to the front of the car, are your batteries. In addition, when you fold the seat down along the back end, it tees with more batteries. With more batteries. So you have batteries running the full width of the car and the length of the car from the seats to the dash. Well, now, I have to say, the cup holder in the middle of the seats in the back is a good improvement. Yeah. But I would have never guessed it was to cover up the battery. And you were telling us something that very interesting about the tires, because you're talking to somebody who doesn't know a whole lot about a normal car. Mm -hmm. uh, but for people who do, they know it's got that drivetrain that drives you know, the wheels. But right. this has got a motor on the wheels. They're electric motors that drive the wheels. Um, the, the electric motors obviously receive the power from the batteries underneath yeah. here. Yeah. Um, the drivetrain itself has many features that are different. The brakes are what's called regenerative regenerative braking. Yeah. Uh, when you apply the brakes, what used to be wasted heat energy that is released off 
to the atmosphere or wherever, mm -hmm. that energy is captured and converted back to electrical energy to send a little boost back to the battery. When you hit the brakes. When you hit the brakes. This, so. this is all different. It's so different. Like the whole concept is different. Well, the whole idea behind the car is to eliminate wasted energy. So there are areas that a car uses energy and waste energy that we're trying to capture. To suck back in. That's correct. Into that. But that is just the coolest. It's, it's, it's just the coolest thing. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I'm ready for one. <laughs> but it, it's a very cool thing. Now, one thing that, that we were talking off camera about that I, I kind of want to end with, and thank you mm -hmm. so much for your time. This has been amazing. My pleasure. Is you were saying that when you people come in, I said, I bet when people come over to Chevrolet and they want a Volt, they've done all the research because they want one. Mm -hmm. And you said, well, no, not so much, uh, that you actually talk to them about it. Yes. And we, we do a full interview process with them to find out exactly their needs mm -hmm. and their current conditions because there are many considerations about a Volt uh, that you have to take that you wouldn't need for other cars. Right. For example, if you live in an apartment, if they don't have charging stations, how were you planning on charging the batteries? Right. These are little things that we have to think a little bit out of the box on right. uh, to provide information so that people, if they do choose a Volt or any electric car, right. uh, that they're going to make a decision that will work for it's them. A good fit. That's correct. Yeah, that is, that is just so helpful, and I'm so glad you do that because I can see how it would be just an amazing car to have. I yes. mean, really, especially if you're a lot of town driving. Oh, man, you could save some money. That's correct. And, and how interesting. You'd learn a lot, too, because this is a whole... To be a mechanic on one of these, that's changing too. It is. It, everything's changing. We're changing, but the world's changing, so we have to keep up with it. That's right. Have, we have to be flexible. That's correct. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed this edition of Buncombe Life. We've been everywhere. You've seen solar water panels. You've seen electric cars. It's been really interesting for us. We have learned so much during this episode. I want you to stay tuned, though, next month. Uh, I'm not sure where we'll be, but you know it's got to be interesting because we're doing all kinds of interesting stuff now. Also, we've done some Buncombe Life special editions. I want you to watch for those uh, on this channel, BCTV2, because we've been out to the Biltmore Estate and looked at their uh, solar panels, which was amazing. We've made a trip over to Pisgah Legal Services and heard some just heart-wrenching stories about foreclosure that you don't want to miss. So those are two special editions of this show that I want you to watch for on this channel or, of course, at BuckhamCounty.org on our YouTube channel. You can always find those. So, as I ask, make sure you stay tuned next month because who knows where we'll be, but you don't want to miss it. <laughs>